about tessellations. And tessellation is a pattern that is created by shapes that cause no overlap. So as you can see in this bird, the pattern repeats and it fits together perfectly just like a puzzle. Like where this cutout is here for the bird wing, the face fits in perfectly. And in geometry, there are three naturally tessellating shapes. There is the square, the triangle, and the hexagon. And the hexagon has six sides. So for example, if I were to just draw a bunch of squares, they're going to connect together perfectly with no gaps. So that is going to cause a tessellation. Same with the triangle. I can do an upside down or a right side up and upside down and see how they start to fit together perfectly. And I could do the same thing with the hexagon. Now, if I tried to do that with a circle, I'm going to be left with these gaps. So that extra space creates a gap and that would mean that the circle does not tessellate. So these are the three natural um, shapes that do that on their own. And we are going to be learning today how to make our own tessellating shape. Now I'm gonna be teaching you how to make this bird, but once you learn the technique, uh, the possibilities are endless for you to create your own. Our artist of the day, his name is M.C. Escher. Just M. C. Escher. Now I'm gonna show you a few of his tessellating artworks. Okay, so this first one is his unicorn tessellation. And as you can see, the unicorns are facing each other and they fit perfectly into each other uh, to create this really complex tessellation. The second one that I'm gonna show you is his fish tessellation. And just like the unicorns, the fish are going all different kinds of directions, but they perfectly fit together, which is what creates uh, the tessellation. And thirdly, MC Escher also liked to make transformation tessellations. So in this example, you can see the fish at the bottom are starting to transform into birds at the top. Now, these are just a few of his hundreds of tessellations. So if you Google MC Escher and go to his website, you can see lots more. It's just it's so fascinating to see how he used math to create his artwork. Weren't those so cool? Now, his tessellations are a lot more complex than ours is gonna be, but we're gonna start small, and then uh, if you have fun doing this, you are more than welcome to be creative and make your own. So what you're gonna need to get started is a piece of thin cardboard. I'm using the back of this Velveeta mac and cheese box. You could use a cereal box. If you don't have anything cardboard, just another piece of paper will work just fine. And we're gonna be using this cardboard to make our shape. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to cut a rectangle. And you want it to be um, big enough to work with, but also uh, small enough so that it can repeat on your page. Now, to get the tessellation to work, we need to make this into one of those naturally tessellating shapes, which would be a square. So if you have a ruler, you could measure out and make your square. You could figure out how long this side is and make sure this side is that long. I actually left all my rulers in my classroom, so we are going to improvise. Another way you can do that is by folding the corner until it gets even with the bottom, like that. Okay, so I made sure that this corner touches the bottom and it's straight across there. And then I'm going to take a pencil or a pen, whatever you have around, and I'm going to draw a line. And then that's creating my square. So then I'm gonna cut the square Perfect. 
Okay, so from here, you're gonna need some tape and scissors. So the key to getting our shapes to tessellate is that whatever we cut, we have to then shift it up on our tessellation. So I'm gonna keep this bird here um, just to show you that whatever I cut off here, I just shifted it up. So we're gonna cut the bottom corner off of our bird. And then I see I cut it like that. So then I'm just gonna shift all the way up and I'm gonna add a little piece of tape. Perfect. Okay, uh-oh. Gotta make sure it doesn't slide. Okay, I'm gonna wrap that around. So then you see how they will then connect together because I cut this off, I slid it back up. So we're creating our very own puzzle piece. So then here, I'm going to start at that corner and I'm gonna cut the other corner off. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna slide it all the way up. All right, and then I'm gonna make sure that stays in place. I'm gonna tape it. All right, so now we have uh, one of the hardest parts, and we just have one more thing to cut. Now this next part, we're gonna be cutting the face out, and we are actually not gonna just shift it straight across, we're actually gonna shift it up a little bit, and that's gonna let our birds be a little bit offset. So you want to make sure that you're cutting a triangle out of the big piece. Don't cut it out of the cut piece that we just did. So I'm going to start at the corner of my big piece and I'm going to cut a triangle. And then I'm going to move it up at the top and that's going to be the face of my bird. So size-wise for your tessellation, this is the smallest that I would go. This is the biggest. So this size is fine, this size is fine. So you wanna stay in about the two to three inches um, of your square. So now I'm gonna tape this head on. I'm gonna wrap the tape around. Perfect, and that has created my basic tessellating shape. So for the next part, you're gonna want to get your pencil ready, and we are going to be uh, tracing over our shape in a repeating fashion. So, so that you can see, I'm actually going to be using a Sharpie to trace. You're gonna be using a pencil, that way if you mess up, you can't erase. So I'm gonna start at the bottom middle of my paper and I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to trace over my shape. Now you want to make sure that your tape was fully wrapped around the tessellation so that it doesn't get in the way whenever you're tracing. All right, and as you can see, some of uh, my lines didn't fully connect, so I'm just gonna connect them there. Perfect. Okay, and now I'm gonna start repeating my shape, and you'll see that it's gonna fit perfectly at every angle. So I'm gonna take this time right now, and I'm gonna finish tracing my tessellation. Now that you've traced your tessellation to cover your whole paper, 
uh, I want you to go back and add some details to your birds. So for me, I'm going to add some um, eyes and a beak and wing details. traced your tessellating shape, now we get to add color. And you use whatever you have at home. If you have crayons, color pencils, markers, feel free to use those. I'm going to, again, be showing you how to use your markers as a watercolor paint. So if you have a paintbrush and a cup of water, you can make these markers turn into paint. You're also gonna need a piece of foil. So start by coloring the marker onto the foil. So pick all the colors that you want to use and put them onto the foil. And then what you'll be doing is dipping your paintbrush in the water and then putting it into the marker and it'll act like a watercolor paint. All right, so I'm gonna be using a little bit of all the colors. And I want you, no matter how you're co coloring it, whatever material, I want you to create some kind of pattern. So maybe you color this one red, this one orange, this one yellow, and then go back to red, orange. Um, so because we're talking about patterns, I want you to uh, use pattern in your color. Okay, so I'm dipping my paintbrush in the paint after I put it in the water, and then I'm putting it on the paper. All right, so I'm gonna take this time and I'm gonna finish painting my tessellation. So there you have it. That is how you create a tessellating bird. And uh, on yours, I want you to finish coloring yours to create a pattern, just like I did here, where I did blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, and how I started doing here. So can't wait to see your bird, and then also can't wait to see if you create your very own tessellation.